In this video, we'll set up the render for our six fill scene. So let's jump into Cinema 4D and get cracking. So let's do our six fill render scene now. So we'll need to open our last saved six fill um, scene file. So let's go into our MoGraph countdown folder and we have six fill here. And my last version was version nine when everything was finished. So let's open that up. And then let's remind ourselves what we've got. So we've got this, um, we've got our open VDB mesh, which is cached. And this is our kind of meshed fluid simulation. And it is um, working inside a bool object with a mo text to give us the fluid like motion, but with this really flat face. With, if I hit ND, um, with our original even topology. So that's working well. So that's the one part of it. And then the other part are the foam particles, which we can see, which are cached and are moving around inside. Okay, so let's get on with the rendering of this. Let's create a new kind of render folder for it so we stay really organized. We'll go to File, Save As, and let's go to our MoGraph Countdown. We'll go into our Render Build subfolder, and let's make a new folder in here. Call it XP Countdown 6 Fill. All right, let's go into there. And we can save it as that, and that's fine. Let's hit save. All right. So we can actually steal a lot of elements from our previous render build. Uh, we've already done the lighting and the cameras, which will stay the same. And we can even nick one of the materials. So let's do that. We'll go to File, Open, and we'll go to our MoGraph folder, Render Builds. 654 combined is what we've just done. So let's open that. We can open our last version, which was our render settings version. So let's click on that. Let's hit open. All right. And what do we need to take from here? Well, if you remember, our scene objects were our cameras and lights. So let's hit control C, copy those, go to window, back to our new file and hit, I'll just minimize that system and then hit control V, and now we've got our lights in place, very good. And let's just go back, and what we could do is we could take our six splash glass material that we used in our 654 combined scene for the bag. Um, we'll use that for our liquid element. So let's just hit Control C, copy that material, and we'll go Window, Countdown 6, let's go into our Material Manager down here and hit Control V, and there is our material. Let's rename it whilst we're here and call it 6 Fill Water. Fantastic. Right, so let's just file the save incremental. There we go. Right, so what can we do? Let's let's change our layout and go into our Cycles 4D layout so we can do some real-time previewing of this scene. And here we go. So here is our kind of clay render of our bool. So what we need to do is put an actual material on here. So let's go to System. So what do we need to texture? Well, we need to put the texture on the actual bool object itself. So let's grab our six fill texture that we just pinched from the previous scene, put it on our bool, and there we have got our liquid. And it's looking a little bit dark and a bit dull, and we've got some fireflies. So remember, what we do to fix that is in the render settings. So let's do that, and actually let's, let's create, if we go to our render settings, by default, uh, our default render settings are always these default um, values that Cinema 4D dictates. And it means that every time we want to render something in our project, we're having to change the renderer to cycles and we're having to change various different things. Let's create at this point a custom render preset, which means that we can just open that up immediately and everything's ready for our kind of base render settings. So let's do that. So let's change our renderer. What we'll do is we'll, we'll go to render settings here and we can make a new one. So let's make a new one. I'm going to double click and let's just call it Cycles Start and hit the white button. So now we're looking at our, we're going to be rendering with and viewing our Cycles Start render settings. So let's change it. We'll go to Standard Cycles. 
So now we're rendering with cycles. Let's go to Cinema 4D. And I'm always going to be wanting to render with my CUDA video cards. So if you have them in this machine, I've got two 1080 Ti's. So that's going to be in our render settings. Excellent. And also, that'll probably do us actually. We can keep this as just our base render settings. And so every time we open this up, we're going to have at least cycles set as our renderer and our device set to CUDA. Good. So what we could do now is go to render setting, save preset. So let's click it. Cycle start. OK. Excellent. So now we ha always have this cycle start as a preset so we can set up scenes more quickly. Right, so let's make some adjustments now. So first of all, we have some fireflies. These are indirect lighting fireflies because of our um, our glass material. So we need to go to the integrator and sampling, and we need some indirect clamping. So look, we can see this firefly here, where my mouse is pointing. Let's put some low-level clamping at, say, 5 and it's gone. They've all gone. So five clamping on that indirect lighting was enough. Fantastic. So let's address um, our, let's go to our light paths and ray depth. It's feeling quite dark because by default, we only have one ray bounce. So the light isn't able to bounce around and reflect, uh, refract and reflect off of this glass surface and therefore light it up further. It has one bounce. Let's put this up to say five, which is what we used in the other scene. And it's already lighter. And this will become more apparent when we start rendering our bubbles. But for now, that's looking pretty decent. So let's just switch that off. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to do our bubbles. So our bubbles are our foam emitter. And what we could do here is we could do another kind of glass object. So these bubbles have got reflections and they kind of refract the light as well. But to be honest, it's a bit overkill really for what we're doing. They're going to be so tiny, it's probably wasted um, computational power. So let's just instead, we're just going to do a standard diffuse material with a bit of specular. So we'll go to create and we'll go cycles 4D and surface and we'll bring in a principled BSDF. And it's got a bit of specular on by default. It's a base color of just an off white. Do you know what? Let's leave it at that and see what it looks like. So let's call this uh, bubbles. Fantastic. And we'll drag that onto our emitter. Now, there's going to be a problem here. They're going to look, they're going to look massive. <laughs> yeah, they do. Let's play it through. They look cool, but that's not quite the look that we're after. So we want these to be smaller, but the problem we have is that they're cached, these particles, along with the radius uh, value. But we're able to adjust the size at render time, which is fantastic. And the way we do that is with an instance tag. So let's go to Tags, Cycles 4D, Instance. So by default, what Cycles does is it creates a sphere instance for every particle. And by default, it has a, a, a segment value of 24, which is we don't need that many segments for something this tiny in our render. So let's put that down and it'll, it'll, it'll compute more quickly. Great. So we can also reduce the size. Now we need them down. Let's put the size multiplier down to say 20%. Fantastic. Now we've got smaller bubbles. What would be nice is if we had a bit of variation in that size so they weren't so uniform. So let's put some size variation of, let's say, 20%. Okay. I'm thinking they're fractionally too big. In the multiplier, let's put it down to 15. Good. So now we're getting a good look. Look at that. That is looking excellent. Right, we've got one more problem with this scene, though. And let's just go to our scene objects and go to our reference camera, which is a bit closer. Can you see the problem? We've got some bubbles penetrating our fluid surface, which is not what we want. And this is a result of the fluid effects solve. 
Um, and this is if if we're this is a very low resolution fluid sim, so the, the the fluid particles had quite a big radius. So as a result, the foam ones are kind of floating on top of those two big radius values. The smaller the fluid particles, the more realistic and closer the foam will be to them. But it doesn't matter for us because we can use a rendering trick to get rid of these bubbles that have left the volume of our glass. So what we do is we use that object tag that's like our compositing tag. So let's go to Tags, Cycles 4D, Object Tag. And on that object tag, all we need to do is say this. We can see bubbles through glass, the transmission, but we can't see them from the camera. So let's deactivate the camera. And there we go. Fixed. Simple as that. And now we've got bubbles that work all the way through to the top. And it's looking really, really nice. Fantastic. Right, so whilst we're winning, let's just save incremental. Okay. So finally, let's have a look at samples. So at the moment, this is on 25 samples, which means 625 path samples. And looking fairly decent, but we've got a fair amount of grain here. And that rendered in 22 seconds. So let's just try. Let's put this up to, say, 30 samples. So this is going to chug through it a little bit more, further clean those up. All right. And not too much of a hit. So I think we're going to be looking OK. We're going to go for 30 samples. So let's just pause that. Let's go back to our render settings. So what we need to do is go back to our integrator and sampling and make sure our default samples of 4 is now set to 30 to match that amount. Let's just have a look and make sure that everything is okay. Yeah, we want to, in our film, make sure that we have transparent glass selected, which we do. Very good. Excellent. Right, so we're ready to set up our render settings now. So let's go to, actually before we do, here's a gotcha. If we had stayed in our camera reference, our framing would be all off. This is our production cam. Let's go into it before we do anything else. Good. <laughs> right, and let's go back to our render settings. So in the output, I'm just going to do this at 720. That's what I've decided my renders are going to be. You could bump that up to 1080 or higher, should you wish. Our frame rate is 30, which is the same as the project. Now, we need to, we need to work out our frame range. So let's just put this onto manual. So what we want to do is we want to render this to the point where... Now, I'm looking at my viewport here. So we want this, as soon as this six is filled, it's going to cut into the splash scene. But let's just give ourselves a few handles, free, a few frames handles either side. So let's do, I'm going to do 175 frames just to be sure. Okay, so let's do from zero to 175. Let's go to our save area. And we want OpenEXR, 16-bit. We want an alpha channel. Yes. Let's go to our save location. And we want to go to render bills 6 fill. Let's make a new folder. We'll call it render. And in there, we want actually, if I click on one of these, it will give it the file name. Then we can go into the render folder. And let's take off the Cinema 4D suffix and hit save so that's all ready to go yes we will then file save as and this one we will call version 11 render settings save okay so now we're ready for action so let's hit render to picture viewer and I'll go full screen so this is the first frame is this number six, and that's the quirk of the way in which the open VDB cached and the bool are working together. But then when we get to frame one, we have the correct um, 
we have the, 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 the correct scene. So here we can really see that glass dispersion object working. You see there's a really nice separation of those RGB lights uh, values. Um, it looks fantastic. So we will let this one chug along and fairly decent render times at this time. It's not going to be a, a horrific render, this one. So I'll pause it here and come back to you when this is finished and we'll have a look at the final piece. So here we are on our picture view with our render finished and all the way through, so that's looking all right. And that took, look, it was a quick render, 21 minutes for 175 frames. So that was pretty good. Let's just play it through. And here it is in the real time, looking pretty nice. Bubbles are moving around nicely. Nice kind of glints from the light. And at this point, when we get to here, when it fills up, splash, it'll then transition into our splash scene. So excellent. That one's looking really good. Pretty simple one to set up. And those um, files are all ready to uh, transfer into After Effects when we start compositing this all together. Great. So now we've done that, we've got our six splash into five shrink into five burn. Now we need to move on and get our four crumbling scene rendered so we can get that one out ready for the composition too.